Hello everyone, it's Raisa. Welcome to the vlog. I am a 24-year-old human being. <laughs> I live in Pittsburgh. I graduated from RISD two years ago at this point, and I used to make a ton of vlogs. If you want to check out my RISD vlogs, you can. They're on my channel. Now I'm just doing regular vlogs of my life, and I'm trying to inject more art in my life because the past two years i obviously haven't drawn as much as i had when i was in college and if you also don't know i just work a regular nine to five job i mean it's not actually nine to five but you know what i mean and um i don't like it <laughs> but you know it pays the bills and that's life and that's reality i didn't really know what i was going to do after college because i was like very very burnt out from school and i just kind of wanted a break i did ultimately want to move to los angeles california because i wanted to be in the animation industry still kind of want to but it's a little bit complicated not really sure exactly truly what i want to do in my life anyway today on the agenda it's like 1 p.m like it's really it's like the afternoon like i've just been in bed all morning and haven't really done anything but today i'm planning on going to the library maybe and the reason i thought about this was because i was watching a video from her little peach the other day and she was talking about how she started the artist way which is this book that literally every artist on youtube talks about which i feel like now i'm obligated like now i feel like i need to buy it i think the book said to go on like an artist date and stuff like that she went to the library and she was just looking at art books and she was just drawing stuff from the art books that like maybe inspired her or like writing down notes from it in her sketchbook and stuff and i was like that looks so fun and i feel like i did do that in college i did but obviously i'm not in college anymore so i'm I, i'm not in touch with my academic side <laughs> so i feel like i need to get back into that so it can help me be a little bit more creative the main reason why i haven't been making much art these past two years is just because i just haven't really felt inspired or good enough i mean i i never feel good enough like genuinely but i don't know i just feel like i can't come up with new ideas or like innovative ideas i also have to remind myself that like i don't always have to come up with something extremely new that's a very daunting impossible task to be asking myself every single time i draw like i don't need to you know reinvent the wheel every single time i draw like i can just fucking draw <laughs> i thought that was a good idea i think it will help me sort of practice art more intentionally because i feel like i i have stopped doing that and you know it is because i'm not in an academic setting and stuff like that but you know that that can't really be an excuse because i'm not going back to school like maybe eventually i'll get my master's but i doubt it she was also talking about how going on pinterest and like finding inspiration or going on Instagram and finding inspiration is like not the same as like, you know, in person. And this was so interesting the way she was talking about it. She was saying how like the algorithm is really good at not really showing you anything new or at least anything like unique or innovative. They'll just show you very similar things to what you what you already like. So if you're trying to branch out and look for new inspiration and maybe change something up about your drawing style, your subject matter, don't go to Instagram or Pinterest. They just feed you the same shit over and over again. And that's true. It is very true. Every time I go on Pinterest or Instagram, I just see basically the same stuff. And I, I don't really feel inspired when I look through Pinterest or Instagram. Like sometimes Pinterest, because there's a lot of different avenues that I can take inspiration from, but eventually there becomes a limit where I don't even know what to look for because I haven't been exposed to it. So it's like, how am I going to just be more creative with my art if I don't even know what's out there. So that's where the library comes in. I'm gonna make some mangu and eggs. Mangu is like mashed plantains. I love mangu. It's literally my favorite. I could literally eat that for the rest of my life. That will be my last meal. Mangu and eggs, actually. <laughs> hate about cooking the most is just like all the prep work prep work <laughs> prep work that comes with it like having to cut everything i just wish everything was easy and...
now 4 46 p.m and i am just now ready and i'm gonna go to the library now i really wanted to go earlier but my phone ended up dying because i've been recording on my phone i had to make sure it was charged at least just a little bit so then i can leave i obviously am gonna bring my phone charger with me and like libraries have outlets so i can just charge it there too but i obviously do need my phone so I can go on the bus because I scan my bus ticket with my phone. So that was really annoying and my phone was not turning on. <laughs> it was like 30 minutes later and my phone was still dead. And I'm like, what is going on? If my phone literally never turns on right now, I'm gonna lose my mind because I cannot deal with this right now. I'm wearing my Young Miko shirt. I went to her concert in August wearing jeans. I thrifted these jeans. So this is what we're working with. Anyways, I'm packing up my stuff. I have my laptop in here, my laptop charger. Charger. I'm gonna put my iPad in here as well. So I have all of my electronics because you never, you never know. Also, sometimes my electronics make me feel safe. <laughs> I think that just might be a Gen Z thing. I feel like I need to have my electronics with me at all times. I normally use this tote bag, tote bag, tote bag for work, but I do need to take some things out. I feel like I'm all over the place. I'm gonna bring my little pencil case. And then I'm going to bring, obviously, my sketchbook. This is the sketchbook that I have at the moment. I, I really don't draw on my sketchbook that often. Maybe I should come closer. Yeah, I mean, I have some stuff in here, but honestly, most of it's like, I'm drawing. I wrote some stuff. I don't know. I don't, like, I only really have literally, like, these pages filled. And the rest of it's empty. And I've had this sketchbook for a long time, actually. It says September 2023 been a whole year and I've only done that much. You can tell that, you know, I don't really draw a lot, but we're gonna try to change that. This is gonna go in my tote bag. Yeah. And it kind of makes my bag really heavy. I have my iPad, my computer, and all the cords in here, so. Saw you soon Good morning. It's the next day. I did not go to the library last night <laughs> because I had, ugh, honestly, it was really annoying. I just had very bad time management yesterday and time planning. I honestly forgot that it was Saturday, unaware that like on Saturdays or Sundays, things might close at different times than the normal weekday. So the library closed at five. And by the time I went down there, it was already five. <laughs> I had searched it up and realized that the library was closed. And every other library was closed. <sighs> so that was annoying. But I ended up going to the market and went to go out to eat. I mean, overall, like, it was fine. It was nice. But, like, I was just annoyed because I, I just should have gone earlier. I don't know. I was just having a bad brain day. And that's, that's what it's like with a person who has ADHD. So it was a bad brain day. I'm really annoyed about it, but it's okay. It's a new day. I can't really go to the library today. Today's Sunday and the library is closed on Sundays. But either way, I don't really feel like going out and about in the world again. I already did that yesterday and I'm, you know, I have a limit. I can only go out for a couple hours and then I'm exhausted. <laughs> Anyways, I'm just going to eat my food and I'm gonna watch some YouTube. And then after that, I am just gonna edit what you saw yesterday.
today was a success. I finally went to the library. I got some books and I did not want to leave the library until I checked out some books. I didn't want to just leave empty handed. I wanted to check out some art books, but I also wanted to check out some fiction books as well because I want to read. And I really, oh, that's my sketchbook. I really want to get back into reading and I do enjoy physically reading a book. I don't know why I didn't go to the library sooner. I just like don't do stuff. I just like neglect myself. I'm just like, oh, I'll just stay home all day. And then I wonder why I feel bad. But I also sketched a lot. I showed you guys, which honestly, I'm very proud of myself because I filled, I mean, like two spreads. This one is more filled than this one. This one is a little bit more sparse, but I was starting to get a little bit tired of drawing. And I was going to do like notes of like the things that I liked because I was drawing from this book, Botanical Prints. And this book is just so just like looking at all the prints is just like beautiful and i really love how this artist his name is henry evans i love how he uses these like blocks of color obviously like that's what prints are like it's just a block of color but like this one specifically this is persimmon and literally like the persimmon is just blocks of color but like it has so much volume in just this one block of color and i just thought that was just beautiful i loved that so i sketched that and i was sketching a lot of stuff from this book and I was writing just what the flower was or what the plant was. And I was going to write down like things that I liked about the piece. But then eventually I just, I let go of that idea. Yeah, I mean, I'm proud of myself for that, for actually drawing. Even if it wasn't like supposed to be like a masterpiece or anything. It was just to get some practice in because I don't draw very often. I put in a clip earlier where I was searching up references on Pinterest for like flower prints because I want to work on a calendar. I was thinking at first like it will be a theme of maybe like the birth flowers. That's my initial idea. But I was also thinking about it could just be like themed calendars when it's the month of June or July or August. It's a lot of summery scenes. And then like in December, I draw a wintry forest or some shit like that. But I want it to be all prints make them all lino cuts and it wouldn't be original i would just like probably scan them somehow and then print them on each month of the calendar and that's sort of just one of my ideas that i have because i do eventually want to open up an art shop where i will have prints i don't want to do some stationary stuff because i really like stationary stuff and i like being organized so i think that would be cute but um that's just like very much in the pre-planning phase i'm not close to opening it up at all <laughs> but anyways i got this book specifically for that purpose just so i can have some sort of references what would the flowers look like you know what are some te techniques that i guess this artist used that i can probably implement which i think is good and then i also got this book called low tech print by casper williamson casper that's your name but it's basically just showing like different types of printmaking but more in a contemporary sense. There was a lot of printmaking books that were like older Japanese woodblock prints. And obviously like I love that type of stuff. I eat that up. But I wanted just to see a little bit more like contemporary versions. And I really like the cover. Indented like it's raised a little bit. And I think that's cool. I like that. And then I got two fiction books which I'm actually so excited about because I really wanted to just read a random book and I did want to read Throne of Glass but Throne of Glass was not at my library because everybody wants to check it out and everybody has to check it out so eventually I can put it on hold so then anyone who has it checked out has to bring it back in because somebody else has it on hold so I'll probably do that steal their book from them because I wasn't going to get Throne of Glass I was like okay what's another book that I can get and my second and third choices were also not at the library <laughs> so i had to just go with these random books that i just found interesting but i really don't know anything about like i haven't heard anybody talk about them maybe i have but i just don't remember but this one first is a romance novel i don't think i've read maybe i have i don't remember well i is the fault in our stars considered romance i would think that that's considered romance right a little bit so i've read that but i also don't read a lot so i don't know what types of books i gravitate towards i know i gravitate towards fantasy but i can only say harry potter for that that's really the only fantasy book i've read it's called expiration dates this is by rebecca Searle, Surly. It's about this main character. Her name is Daphne. And she has been in like a few relationships. And every single time she receives numbered papers that tell her when the relationship will end. But then she goes on this blind date 
with this guy and the paper only says his name and it doesn't say the time when like their relationship will expire this book basically i guess just centers on jake and daphne's relationship and their story and like what happens and i don't know i ate that up a little bit the expiration date concept i ate that up i will say that and i don't know i just think it's it's kind of cute and it's kind of cool like i would like to know when my relationships are gonna end you know sometimes i, I want to know the next one i got was called my murder by katie williams and this one is different this one's not a romance at all this one's more like a mystery i would i would assume i mean i would assume it's a mystery right or like a thriller because it's literally called my murder basically this is about a woman who ends up getting killed <laughs> by a serial killer and then eventually she gets brought back to life by a government project she's basically just like going back to her old routines going back to her family living her life but she also has to you know deal with this question of who killed me what's going on why did i get killed blah blah, blah. all those questions i'm sure will arise it seems interesting and i want to read it and these two books were in the like bestsellers area i am a sheep I do flock with the rest of the people and I do want to like what other people like sometimes. And also, especially if you're having trouble picking something or making a decision, I would just pick what everybody else picked. So since these were bestsellers, I was like, you know what? Let's just read these because they're bestsellers for a reason. People like them for a reason. Let's see if I like them. I'm probably going to read the expiration dates first just so it's, I feel like it'll be like a lighthearted sort of read. I will not be reading that today. I'll probably be reading that another time. But I will keep you guys updated and I'll, I'll let you guys know what I what I think about these books. That's it for this vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed. It was, I think, eventful. <laughs> it was an eventful weekend. I did more than I did in like the last two years that I've lived here in Pittsburgh. But I'm on a journey of trying to better myself, I guess, if that makes sense. I mean, it paid off. I had fun. I loved going to the library. I loved being there, honestly. We'll be doing that again. <laughs> Highly recommend going to your local library. Just a symptom you've forgotten. You slipped me in your pocket.